Uh, thanks for the uh, opportunity to speak here. Today, I want to report some developments in the study of uh, symptomatic behaviors of uh, random walks on countable groups. So let's uh, start with uh, the definitions. Uh, random walks on the integer lattice Z is a very classical object. It amounts to adding up uh, identically distributed integer valued random variables. Uh, random walks on general countable groups were introduced by Harry Keston in his thesis back in 1959. So it goes like follows. You take a countable group gamma and a probability measure mu on gamma. Uh, now let's sample a sequence of independent random variables y1, y2, and so on on gamma distributed as mu. And the random walk is obtained by multiplying these increments each time on the right. So here we start at the identity element. And at the time n, we see the product of y1 up to yn. And this process, we call it a mu random walk on gamma. So here is an example. Uh, when gamma is generated by a finite set S, we can draw the Kelly graph of gamma with respect to S where the vertex set is gamma and the edge sets are G and uh, GS. So you connect G with a GS with an edge labeled by S. And let's take a step distribution mu supported on S union with its inverse. Uh, then we can uh, visualize the random walk as the nearest neighbor process on the Kelly graph where each step you select one of the neighbors according to mu and move there. So here is an example of the Kelly graph of a free group on two generators A and B, and you see this uh, uh, four regular tree. And the random walk on this, uh, you, you choose one of the neighbors and uh, go explore the tree. Uh, so what kind of uh, symptotic behavior do we study for random walks? Uh, in the work of Keston, he considered uh, the relation between the spectrum of the associated Markov operator P mu on L2 of gamma and the structure of the group gamma. So here P mu is this uh, average operator on L2 of uh, gamma defined like this. So Keston proved the following amenability criterion. So let's take mu to be a non-degenerate symmetric probability measure on gamma. Here, symmetric means the mu gives the same mass to G and the G inverse, and non-degenerate uh, means the support of mu generate the group gamma. And then if you look at the spectral radius, which is the operator norm of P mu, you can also uh, see it as the limit of uh, the return probability to identity after two n steps to the power one over two n, and then you take the limit. So the spectral radius is one uh, if and only if the group gamma is amenable. So the notion of uh, amenability, it has uh, more than a dozen uh, equivalent characterizations. It was introduced by uh, von Neumann. Here we can take the definition to be uh, gamma is amenable uh, if there is a gamma invariant mean on L infinity functions on gamma. So Keston's theorem tells you uh, amenability, which is a property of the group gamma, is equivalent to a sub-exponential decay of the return probability to identity. Uh, so when you know that the group gamma is amenable, the spectral radius is equal to one. Uh, quantitatively, one can further ask what is the behavior of the spectral distribution of uh, P mu near one, or equivalently asking, um, what is the decay of the return probability when n goes to infinity? And these questions have been studied extensively since the pioneering work of Verapulus, and uh, both uh, analytic and uh, geometric tools have been developed to uh, study these uh, questions. So this is one aspect of uh, asymptotic behavior of uh, random walks. Uh, another important aspect concerns uh, harmonic functions on groups. So here, uh, for a real valued function f on gamma, we say it is mu harmonic if it satisfies the mean value property that f is equal to p mu f. Uh, when all bounded mu harmonic functions are constant, we say uh, gamma mu has the Liouville property. 
when 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 the pair is the not Liouville, uh, we know that there are non-constant mu harmonic functions, and uh, in this case, a, more, a general theory due to a Furstenberg was uh, introduced to represent the space of uh, bounded mu harmonic functions. So the crucial object here is a measure theoretical object called a uh, Poisson Furstenberg boundary, where you can represent all the bounded mu harmonic functions. As I'm not going to uh, give you a precise definition of what is a Poisson Furstenberg boundary here, but only vaguely uh, describe it as follows. So we have this uh, random walk process uh, WN, and if you look at the trajectory, you see a sequence of a uh, group element. So the random walk trajectory lives in this uh, product space uh, gamma to the natural numbers. And we put the uh, usual Borel sigma field generated by uh, cylinder sets. So inside this uh, trajectory space, you can consider the tail sigma field, which consists of all these events that only depends on what happens when n goes to infinity. So formally, you can write it like this. And we can also take the invariant sigma field, uh, which consists of those events that are invariant under the time shift. Uh, so here, the time shift S acts on the product space by a uh, shift time by one. So roughly speaking, the poisson Furstenberg boundary is the gamma space uh, which consists of a space, a sigma field, and a harmonic measure that uh, realizes the invariant sigma field. So this invariant sigma field is closely related to bounded harmonic functions through the uh, Martin-Gale convergence theorem. So it is a measure theoretical object uh, that captures the invariant sigma field. If you, uh, in particular, if we know the invariant sigma field is non-trivial, uh, which means that there are events uh, whose probability is neither zero or one, uh, then we can find uh, non-constant bounded harmonic functions in the space. Uh, so random walk entropy is the crucial uh, quantity in the study of uh, poisson Furstenberg boundaries. So here, since we assume uh, gamma is countable, we can take the Shannon entropy of the random variable Wn. Uh, so so the entropy of a Wn we denote by h mu n and think of it as a function of time n. And it's defined uh, in the usual way for a Shannon entropy. And because of a subadditivity, we know that uh, h mu n divided by n, the limit uh, converges, uh, the limit exists. And this uh, quantity is called the uh, asymptotic entropy of the random walk. So this quantity is uh, related to Liouville property uh, from the entropy criterion due to uh, Aves, uh, Derenik, Kamenovich, and Vashik. So when the step distribution mu uh, has the finite Shannon entropy, then asymptotic entropy H mu is equal to zero is equivalent to the property that uh, gamma mu is uh, Liouville. So this is a powerful criterion uh, that uh, tells you uh, the Liouville property for finite entropy step, step distributions is equivalent to a vanishing of a symptotic entropy. So the conditional version and uh, criteria due to uh, Kamenovich uh, provide tools for the identification problem for poisson Furstenberg boundaries. Uh, so as we said before, uh, the, this boundary is a measure theoretical object defined abstractly to represent uh, bounded harmonic functions. And the, and the identification problem asks for a concrete model for this uh, boundary. And once, uh, so it can be very useful if you have a concrete model, uh, you, can, uh, you can look at the dynamics on it and use it to prove other things. So the, uh, so entropy tools are crucial for the identification problem here due to the work of uh, Kamenovich. Uh, so we have mentioned the two aspects uh, of uh, random walk sound groups, uh, one about uh, decay of a return probability or the spectrum or the spectral measure of the associated uh, Markov operator, and another about the harmonic functions and uh, poisson Furstenberg boundary. So here are a few uh, loosely phrased questions that have emerged from the study of random walks. 
So the first asks, can some uh, random walk behaviors be deemed a uh, group invariant? So in this question, uh, you might want to restrict the class of uh, random walks under consideration to some uh, moment conditions or some uh, other constraints. We will see uh, examples in a moment. And the second question asks what kind of uh, properties of group can be characterized in terms of uh, random walk behavior. For instance, in the Keston theorem, uh, the property of the group is uh, amenability, and it can be uh, characterized in terms of uh, sub-exponential decay of uh, return probability. And the third one uh, asks, uh, uh, can we use random walk as a tool to uh, understand the groups and their actions? And uh, that will be the main focus of the later part of the talk. And in each of these uh, directions, uh, many natural questions uh, remain open. So let's look at the first one for, for a moment. Uh, so the, the first question uh, is sometimes referred to as the stability problems for random walks uh, because you want to understand whether uh, these, uh, you, when, when you choose uh, different kinds of random walks from a certain class, whether uh, the behavior is uh, stable. Uh, so these questions are interesting both from the point of view of uh, understanding random walk behaviors and from uh, searching for group invariants arising from stochastic processes on them. Uh, for return probabilities, we have the following stability theorem due to Pitet and uh, Salov cost. So the theorem tells us that the equivalence class of the decay function of a return probability where you look at the class of uh, step distributions of uh, non-degenerate symmetric random walks of a finite second moment, uh, this, uh, this uh, equivalent, this class, this equivalence class is a quasi isometry invariant. Uh, so here, uh, two functions are equivalent uh, if you can find a constant C uh, such that they bound each other in this way. And the um, uh, assumption, uh, moment assumption, on the distribution, uh, it means that uh, when for alpha equals to two, uh, if you take distance to uh, distance square and average according to measure mu, uh, it is uh, finite. Uh, so the proof of this the theorem uses a comparison of uh, Dirichlet form techniques, and the, and uh, this uh, finite second moment condition in the theorem uh, cannot be relaxed. So this is a very uh, nice result that tells us uh, that the decay of a return probability is uh, stable under uh, quasi-isometry. Uh, so you might ask uh, for other uh, properties of the random walk, for instance, uh, the Liouville property, is it uh, stable under uh, quasi-isometry? So this is the answer is actually no for general graphs. Uh, there are counterexamples constructed by Terry Lyons and uh, Itai Benjamini. Uh, but the general graphs here are not uh, Kelly graphs. So transitivity should uh, play a role in this uh, question. Uh, so uh, more concretely, one can ask the following. Uh, so instead of uh, asking about uh, stability under quasi-isometry, uh, let's uh, fix the group uh, gamma. And then, uh, and then take the class of uh, non-degenerate symmetric finitely supported uh, step distributions. So roughly you do these uh, finite range uh, symmetric random walks. And the question asks inside this uh, class uh, whether the behavior of uh, the entropy function, uh, which, uh, which takes the Shannon entropy of the random variable Wn and the speed function uh, which takes the average displacement. Uh, so here X should be W in our early notation. Uh, whether this uh, displaced average displacement function are uh, stable in this uh, class. So this question in for general finitely generated groups is still uh, wide open. And it is perhaps one of the most uh, important uh, open problem for uh, random walks on groups. So this is about uh, stability. Uh, we actually do not know uh, about, uh, we do not know whether the behavior of entropy and the speed are stable even you take just a fixed group and consider a finite range of symmetric random walks. Uh, so now let's turn to the uh, third point. 
uh, about uh, using our random walks uh, as tools to study groups and their actions. And the first one to mention that uh, random walks provide the natural tools to study stationary distributions. So here the context is that uh, we take a group gamma acting on a compact space X by homeomorphisms. Let's take a probability measure mu on gamma. In general, uh, invariant measures do not necessarily exist for such actions, but by, by a standard compactness argument, uh, you, we know that uh, stationary measures always exist. So here uh, a measure nu is called a stationary uh, if it is if when you convolve new with this uh, step distribution mu, it remains the same. For instance, the harmonic measure on the Poisson boundary is a stationary measure. And uh, so, so this this is somewhat uh, a replacement for invariant measure in some sense. Uh, so it's not uh, necessarily invariant, but is invariant on average along the random walk. Uh, so. So the study of uh, stationary measures uh, goes back to uh, first work of uh, Furstenberg, where uh, a fundamental observation is made that uh, one, a stationary distribution new here gives rise to a gamma equivariant map from the Poisson boundary of uh, gamma mu into uh, probability measures on X. And this map is uh, often called the an affine uh, boundary map. And then uh, we can study the property of uh, this uh, map. And this is the starting point for a lot of results in the rigidity phenomena, which is uh, out of uh, outside the scope of this talk. Uh, so I want to uh, mostly focus on, some, on a special topic uh, concerning study of uh, groups acting on rooted trees. Uh, so this family of groups provide a rich source of examples for torsion groups which are also called uh, Burnside groups. It means that uh, all elements in the group have a finite order. And they also provide examples for groups of intermediate growth, and the non-elementary amenable groups, and a lot, a lot more other properties. Um, so let's, uh, let's uh, look at uh, volume growth. Uh, so, when, uh, so let's take a finitely generated group gamma and S be a finite generating set. So we have the Kelly graph of gamma with respect to S, where we have the word, uh, where we have the graph distance, and this is also uh, the. You can also see it as the word length of a group element. So the distance from identity to G on the Kelly graph is the smallest number, so that you can express G in terms of the generators in S union with the S inverse. So the volume function counts the size of ball on the Kelly graph. So V gamma S at N, it counts the number of elements in the radius, in the ball of radius N on the Kelly graph around the identity. And by, since the graph is a transitive, uh, the all balls there, um, they have the same volume. Uh, so we say that uh, this uh, function is sub-exponential uh, if, uh, we say that this uh, function is intermediate if it is sub-exponential, but uh, faster than any polynomial. So for instance, you can think of a stretched exponential function. So here are a few important results uh, concerning growth of groups. Uh, Gromov's polynomial growth theorem says that uh, any group of uh, polynomial growth is uh, virtually nilpotent. And for some classes of groups, uh, the growth function is either polynomial or exponential. For instance, for solvable groups by results of uh, Milner and Wolf, we know that uh, a solvable group is either uh, virtually nilpotent or exponential, or for exponential growth. And for linear groups also, it follows from uh, Tits alternative. So it's not easy to uh, come by groups of intermediate growth. The first examples of, uh, of these are constructed by Grigorchuk in, in the 80s, answering a question of uh, Milner. Uh, Grigorchuk actually provides a construct a family of uh, groups uh, denoted by G omega here. We'll talk more about it later. Uh, they provide a continuum of uh, mutually uh, non-equivalent growth functions. 
This is also the first uh, continuum family of uh, pairwise non-quasi-isometric groups. So these are a uh, very uh, important uh, family of uh, groups. And uh, more recently, uh, in the work of uh, Nekrushevich, uh, first examples of uh, simple groups of uh, intermediate growth are constructed. So let's uh, uh, look at, so the most well-known example of a group of intermediate growth is uh, the first Grigorchuk group. It appeared uh, earlier in Grigorchuk's paper on Burnside problems on periodic groups. So this group is a uh, torsion, as you can see from the title. Um, so this, 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 uh, this group belongs to this uh, family G omega and the omega here, the parameter is the uh, periodic sequence uh, 0, 1, 2. And the definition is like this. So you do not have to uh, understand uh, what are these uh, permutations. I just uh, want to draw the uh, portraits here so that you uh, have an idea what the, how the group looks like. So this is the group uh, acting on rooted binary tree that is generated by four uh, automorphisms. So here this automorphism A uh, swaps the two subtrees hanging at the root and the elements B, C, D, they are more complicated. So let's look at this element B. So the, this uh, picture means that it fixes the rightmost ray. So in the binary tree, it's often denoted as the one infinity. So in you code uh, elements, you code the vertices in the binary tree by zero one strings. And this is the rightmost ray, uh, one infinity. And then, uh, so this ray is fixed. And hanging on this ray, you see these uh, subtrees. And then uh, this B permutes the, permutes the subtree hanging at this point by A. And then uh, this one also by A. But in this third one, you see uh, it does not uh, permute at all. So it's identity in this uh, subtree. And then this pattern goes on periodically uh, to infinity. Similarly, for C and D, uh, you see uh, different patterns. So these are, this is the definition of the group. It's generated by these uh, four uh, specific uh, automorphisms of the rooted binary tree. And the growth of this group have been studied uh, extensively. In, in, the, in the original paper of uh, Grigorchuk, sub-exponential -exp growth was shown using a norm contraction argument. And this uh, contraction argument was improved independently by Bathody, uh, Muchnik, and Pack. And they show that uh, there's this upper bound on the growth function for this uh, group, which is in the shape of a, a stretched exponential. And the exponent here, alpha zero, can be computed uh, explicitly from this uh, root of the cubic polynomial. And then you take log two over uh, log lambda zero. The numerical value of this, um, this number is about uh, 0 0.7674. Uh, in the lower bound direction, originally uh, the volume lower bound in stretched exponential e to the n to the one half was shown by Grigorchuk and later uh, improved by Leonov, Bathody, Brazil uh, to be a bit above one half. Uh, uh, in, in joint work with Anna Urshla, we show the following uh, lower bound for the growth of first Grigorchuk group, which matches up in exponent with the uh, upper bound uh, in terms of this uh, alpha zero. Uh, so the statement is the following, for any uh, epsilon bigger than zero, uh, we can find a non-degenerate symmetric probability measure mu on the group uh, satisfying the following uh, three properties. The, the measure mu is of a finite entropy uh, so that we can uh, use the entropy criterion. And it has a non-trivial Poisson boundary. And moreover, the tail decay of this measure uh, satisfies this uh, weak uh, alpha zero minus epsilon moment condition. And uh, so by the entropy criterion and the Shannon theorem, once we have uh, such a measure being constructed, uh, we can deduce the volume lower bound uh, that the growth is at least uh, stretched exponential with exponent alpha zero minus epsilon. So this is a general fact. Uh, if you have a finite entropy measure with the weak alpha moment 
and the non-trivial Poisson boundary, and then by entropy criterion, can show that uh, the volume growth is bounded from below by stretched exponential with the same uh, alpha in the exponent. Uh, so heuristically, the, uh, the idea here is that uh, instead of uh, exhibiting uh, many different distinct elements in a ball to find a volume lower bound, one constructs a random walks with a positive asymptotic entropy. And then uh, since entropy is large, uh, it in indirectly implies that there must be uh, sufficiently many points in the balls. So here is the, is the logic. So if we can observe uh, one non-trivial tail event for the random walk, so suppose that we construct some uh, random walk distribution mu here, and then we manage to show that uh, you, can, you can observe one non-trivial tail event for the mu random walk. Uh, then, uh, then it implies the Poisson boundary of uh, this random walk is non-trivial because of this uh, non-trivial event. And then uh, by the entropy criterion and the Shannon theorem, uh, we can derive from this uh, non-triviality of the Poisson boundary uh, a volume lower bound from the moment condition satisfied by mu. So this is somewhat a randomized argument to find um, to find uh, many elements in the in the balls. So I want to mention uh, what object it. Uh, uh, that uh, we look at that uh, goes that uh, show in the in the proof of uh, this uh, theorem. Uh, so a lot of understanding of these groups come from analyzing some uh, action graphs. So let's uh, say in some generalities. Uh, so take a finitely generated group acting faithfully by homomorphisms on some topological space X. So for the first degree virtue group, it acts on the Cantor set, which is the boundary of the binary tree. And uh, take a point in this uh, Cantor set. And then uh, let uh, G C be the stabilizer of C, which consists of elements of G that uh, fix this point. And then further, let's take a subgroup inside here, denoted by G parentheses C which consists of uh, elements that uh, act um, trivially in a neighborhood of C. So this is a normal subgroup of the stabilizer G C, and the quotient group uh, G C modeled out by this uh, normal subgroup is called uh, the group of germs, and sometimes also called the isotropy group. So this, uh, these are like, you can think of these as uh, equivalence classes of stabilizers of C, where two elements are equivalent if they act the same in some neighborhood of C. Now, when you have a subgroup of G, we can take the cosset graph where the vertices are cosets of edge and the edges are drawn between uh, the cosset HG and HGS. So there is an edge labeled by S between uh, GS, HG and uh, HGS. So S here is the generating set of G. So for instance, if you take H to be G C here, the stabilizer, then what we get is the orbital shear graph of C. And if you take H to be this G parentheses C, uh, then what you get is called the graph of germs or a germ graph. So here is an illustration. Uh, the, the graph above is the graph of uh, germs, and the one below is, uh, is an orbital graph. And you see the first one uh, covers the second, and uh, the group of uh, deck transformations is exactly isomorphic to this uh, quotient group, which we call the group of uh, germs. And so now back to the first degree go to group, as you probably remember from the, the picture of the portraits, uh, this the rightmost ray when infinity is a special point. And uh, at this point, the group of germs is non-trivial. Uh, it is generated by BCD, actually isomorphic to uh, two copies of a product of two copies of a Z over two Z. Now in the proof of the volume lower bound result, we construct a random walk. So that in the end, on a two cover of the orbital shear graph of this ray, uh, we can observe a non-trivial tail event. So here is an illustration. Uh, so on the left, this half ray 
is the Schur graph of uh, one infinity, so this uh, special point uh, KC. And then on the right, we take a two cover of it. And then uh, so the construction in the end results in a random walk with a good control over the tail with a weak alpha zero minus epsilon moment. And, and uh, on this, on this uh, two cover, it's going to, in the end, converge to one of the two ends. And since which end it converges to is random, we, uh, we observe a non-trivial tail event. And uh, notice that uh, this two cover is not the graph of germs. So here, the, this uh, uh, group of germs has two elements. So the full graph of germs is a full cover of uh, this, uh, this uh, orbital graph. So what we take here is uh, this something in between. It's a two cover of this. And the analysis of the induced random walk on the graph in the end that we show convergence to an end, it relies on tools from as parametric inequalities and the he kernel estimates for jumping processes on volume doubling spaces, which were studied by Balo, Bass, Chen, Kuma, Gai, and many others. So in the end, the he kernel estimates so the construction, so the structure of the group allows us to uh, construct uh, interesting measures that uh, moves points in the space in some specific way, uh, thanks to the uh, existence of uh, rigid stabilizers and the good control over some specific uh, substitution words. And then, uh, and then these uh, he kernel estimates allows to show a uh, convergence to an end. Uh, so, so in recent years, uh, due to the work of Nekrishevich, the scope of uh, groups of intermediate growth uh, expanded be beyond the groups acting on rooted trees. So here is the theorem uh, that uh, tells us some uh, sufficient conditions to guarantee intermediate growth. So let's consider a group G acting faithfully on a cantor set uh, X and suppose it's generated by a finite collection of uh, involutions. And also suppose that we have a point in the space X with a non-trivial group of germs. So in the uh, Grigorchuk group, we have a, a finite set A, B, C, D of involutions. And this a special point is you can take to be the one infinity ray. And we, we have seen that uh, it has a non-trivial uh, group of germs. So here are some uh, essential conditions uh, that, uh, that are actually verified by the first Grigorchuk group. And um, so these are some crucial conditions to uh, guarantee uh, in intermediate volume growth. So the first one says uh, the, the orbital graphs are linearly repetitive. So this is a specific uh, low complexity assumption. And the second one is a geometric assumption um, on what the orbital graphs look like. So it requires uh, orbital graphs of uh, regular points to be uh, like a line. So here regular means the uh, group of germs is trivial. So we, we want the regular points to have uh, orbital graphs quasi asymmetric to R. And for this uh, specific special point to see the orbital graph to be uh, quasi asymmetric to array. The last condition concerns uh, uh, fixed points of uh, elements in the stabilizer. It requires uh, that, so you first ask the group of germs of this point C to be finite. And then the, for uh, elements in the stabilizer, you want the interior of the set of fixed points to uh, accumulate on C. So if you re remember this uh, portrait of uh, BCD elements in the first Grigorchuk group, so this, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, identity uh, portrait, so these uh, identities uh, hanging on the ray that goes to infinity uh, exactly uh, shows you that the interior of uh, fixed points uh, accumulate at the point. Uh, so, so the theorem tells us that once you have these conditions verified, then the group G has the intermediate growth. Uh, an important point here is that uh, you do not need, need uh, actions on the rooted tree. So it can be more general actions on the Cantor set. 
on, on a counter set. And once these conditions are verified, you can uh, obtain uh, intermediate growth. So the first examples of uh, simple groups with intermediate growth constructed by an equation which uh, fit into uh, this uh, theorem. The recently with uh, in joint work with uh, Bathody and Krushevich, we have improved the upper bounds for these uh, groups in the theorem. Uh, so we show that under the same assumptions of the theorem, uh, there exists an, an exponent alpha between strictly between zero and one, which of course depends on the group, uh, such that the volume function is bounded from above by this uh, stretched uh, exponential. Uh, in general, these uh, the permutations that uh, show up in these groups can be a lot more complicated, and we do not have a precise understanding of how the growth functions behave, even in the nice examples. And uh, in particular, uh, there are no uh, good lower bound for these groups in general, so uh, it requires uh, further uh, investigation. I also want to mention that um, so this the theorem. Uh, greatly expands the scope of uh, intermediate growth groups, but the well-known uh, problem uh, whether there exist uh, finitely presented groups of uh, intermediate growth uh, still seem a uh, way out of uh, reach. So this, uh, so this is an uh, important open problem in the uh, for uh, intermediate growth groups. I so want to also want to mention that uh, there are some. Uh, a line of work proving amenability of groups using random walk as an important uh, ingredient. So it started with our uh, but work of Bathody and the Virag. They show that the, the Basilica group, which is a, a group acting on two rooted binary tree, is amenable via random walks. And later this was uh, extended by Bathody, Kamenovich, and Nagrushevich to all bounded automaton groups. In 2013, uh, Jushenko and Monod proved amenability of the topological full group of a minimal Cantor system. And later this was uh, unified in the uh, framework of uh, extensive amenability in these works. Uh, so an important ingredient here in all these uh, results is that simple random work on the orbital shear graphs are recurrent and in some sense, um, the underlying structure that in, in these works are quite related to the uh, Schreier graphs and orbital Schreier graphs and the germ graphs that we have seen in the study of uh, growth of groups. And uh, this work allows you to uh, lift the information that uh, simple random works on the orbital graphs are recurrent to uh, obtain uh, useful, useful information about the uh, entropy growth or, um, or spectral profile of the groups. So the, uh, the, the underlying structure in these works are quite uh, closely related to uh, what we have seen in the study of uh, growth. Uh, so I want to mention another aspect that's, uh, that, uh, that was inspired by the family of Grigorchu uh, groups. So as we said before, um, uh, Grigorchu groups, they were in, this is a whole family of groups indexed by these uh, 0, 1, 2 strings, and they provide a continuum of uh, mutually non-equivalent uh, growth functions. So we now have a pretty good understanding of what these uh, growth functions look like. Uh, in particular, combining uh, upper bounds from Bathody, Mochnik, Pack, and the lower bounds in uh, in the work with uh, Anna Urschla, we now know that uh, for periodic strings omega, uh, the volume exponents exist and uh, they can be computed explicitly uh, like in the first Grigorchuk group. Uh, when, when the string omega is uh, not periodic, it can be more uh, complicated. So uh, in particular, uh, we can see uh, interesting oscillating behavior for the growth function. Uh, so if you take uh, two uh, numbers, alpha and the beta, in the interval alpha 0 to 1, where alpha 0 is this uh, growth exponent of the first Grigorchuk, numerically it's about uh, 0.7674. And then uh, if you specify these two numbers, uh, there exists a string in, this, uh, in the symbols 0, 1, 2, 
uh, such that the volume lower exponent is alpha and the volume upper exponent is beta. So the growth function oscillates between uh, these uh, two exponents. So this original proof uh, that uh, there is a continuum of uh, mutually non-equivalent growth functions uh, was proved uh, by introduction of this concept of a space of uh, marked groups. Uh, this is the space where it, this is a space with the groups marked with the generating tuple and equipped with a local topology. So this is a very helpful in the study of uh, comparing uh, growth functions and if you, uh, and one can ask uh, besides the, the growth function how the random walks behave on these uh, groups and how they interact with this uh, sp uh, space of uh, marked groups uh, so in particular here i want to mention uh, mention the speed realization problem um so he, uh, so the question asks what the kind of uh, functions can be realized as equivalent to a uh, speed functions of some simple random walk on a finitely generated group. So this is an interesting quantity because it involves the word distance. So it sees the geometry of the Kelly graph and some properties of the group. And uh, in the work of Amir and Virag, they show that any function between uh, n to the three quarters and n under some mild regularity condition can be realized as a speed function. And in joint work with uh, Jeremy Brazel, we show the statement for any function between root n and n. And this gives a satisfactory answer to the speed realization function, a uh, realization problem, because there is this uh, root n uh, bound known as the universal lower bound for speed of uh, random walks on infinite amenable groups. So, the, uh, so this the universal lower bound comes from the existence of uh, equivalent harmonic embeddings into uh, Hilbert spaces. It's a very nice uh, bound. So since we already know the uh, universal square root lower bound and the uh, upper bound, and, and of course the speed must be uh, at most linear. So, uh, so this gives uh, almost a full answer to what the kind of uh, functions we can realize as uh, speed functions of uh, simple random walks on finitely generated groups. Uh, you can also ask the same question for, for instance, for entropy, uh, but uh, we do not know what the constraints there are for the entropy growth. So it is uh, still open uh, what the kind of uh, functions can be realized as a random walk entropy functions. And the construction is uh, best understood uh, in the space of uh, marked groups. It uses uh, uses a diagonal product, and the and the topology in the space of marked groups really helps us to understand uh, what uh, the structure of the groups and how the random works behave on them. Uh, so that's uh, all I want to say. Uh, thank you for your attention.